morning. What a morning it is. Off to Tel Aviv for some super duper exciting meetings. Meeting Nitzan from Jolt, a really, really hot startup. Meeting an old friend, Shoshi, who's doing some magical stuff using technology. Meeting her for lunch, just some really great meetings today. Hopefully, you'll be joining me. Here we go. Made it to Tel Aviv. Postponed the meeting with Nitzan because I was so late and I was in parking hell this morning. So not a great way to start the day. Man, someone's gotta solve this parking thing once and for all. Anyway, two minutes, the meeting starts. So, it is, what time? By the way, parking in Tel Aviv is horrendous. I'm sorry that I was late. Is that, is that new to you? Yeah. No, but I, sometimes <laughs> I get lucky and, you know, I want to, uh, but no, I'm, I'm totally I pray late. that I get lucky and I was also late. Anyway, it was, it was a bad morning. All right, so first of all, who are you? I'm Nitsan. How long do we know each other? Wow, Elena, I think we know each other for four, four years, five years. Much more than that, are you crazy? From the junction. It was only five years ago? Like yeah, we, time flat. Facebook, like, we surfaced our first selfie together, like, a couple of days ago. Actually, we have good ones. Yeah, we do. We take good selfies together. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you were you ran the junction, which is uh, one of the, how many accelerators are there in Israel? Probably 50? Yeah. One of the 50 accelerators, something really wrong but with the first. There we go, that's bad. Oh, was it the first? Really? I didn't know that. Okay, so you ran the junction, which was the first accelerator in Israel, one of the coolest ones for sure. I haven't been there in forever. It's very embarrassing. Truth is, no, but I'm like officially a mentor there. I'm also officially a mentor at Microsoft. I haven't been there in forever. It's bad, bad news. Anyway, uh, I'm like the worst mentor ever. Okay, so we know each other from back then. After the junction, remind me what you did. I moved to Deutsche Telekom. Right. Right. And, yeah, seed investments for so the you, You've kind of left the mark on Israeli tech, if I, say, you know, if I want to say kind of like, you know, as it is. You've been, I'd say, the spectrum of the ecosystem. Accelerator route, the corporate route, and now you are a co-founder? Mm -hmm. Okay, making sure I'm getting that right. And co-founder and? COO. COO of Jolt. Now, I'm just going to say one thing. We met probably, I don't know what, when this, you had this idea, I guess, for Jolt, probably a year ago by now. You told me the idea, sounded super cool, big fan of yours, so I kind of like said, okay, you know, if anything that can help. And I, it was in the back of my head, whatever it is, and you know, I've been in touch with your team, but then the other day you did a secret launch event in Tel Aviv, and I couldn't make it, but my entire Facebook feed, my entire Facebook feed was people streaming the event. There were lines literally like Apple lines around Tel Aviv, people waiting to get in, not everyone could get in. It was all over the place. So let's start from the beginning. What is Jolt? How the heck did you accomplish such popularity? And why is this? in your opinion, like the future of learning. What is Jolt? So Jolt is a membership for learning. Jolt is made for people like us. We've built Jolt uh, for people like ourselves. And um, the idea is to really enable learning um, that fits our lifestyle. And learning hasn't been reinvented in hundreds of years. So we've taken apart all the elements of learning and put them all together in an ex with an experience. Okay, so let me, first of all, in an advance, apologize for interrupting you if I interrupt you in the next couple of minutes, just because you know You've me. spoken before. So. Yeah, you're used to it. So I'm just gonna take, I guess, one step back. I grew up in a house of educators. My mom and my dad are both educators and due respect, obviously, to my parents. Education as a whole hasn't really changed ever, period. Like, we, we're still, why are we still sitting in classes? Why are there chalkboards in classes in 2017? Why is there no experience? My kids go to school and like, they're doing the same thing I was doing 30 years ago. That doesn't, there's almost no other industry. Well, there are a few, but they're being disrupted now. That hasn't changed at all in 30, it, it's, cra it's really crazy and now, not only is it an industry that hasn't been disrupted and hasn't been modernized, but education's everything. You know, it's our minds. How is it that we're not using new tools and new resources? Yeah, they're using iPads in school, but like right. fundamentally, how is that? And so that's what you guys are attacking. Yeah, I think in general, like, first of all, school finishes. Okay. Which to me doesn't make sense. We should be learning all the time. Always we should be learning. learning all the time. We know that already. We can't afford to stop learning when we're done with school. But school finishes, and then what happens next? So we look for ways to learn, but they're not fun. First of all, your tagline should, oh, should be always be learning. That's a cool concept because we're always saying always be shipping, always be this, always be learning, and that's really true. I mean, we should always. Be, why do we leave school? It's, it's a very valid point. Right, and technology has come into education, but in my opinion, it has gone too far with technology. So technology allows us to learn on our own with recording content and things like that but it's kind of gone too far from what it used to be to it's just me and my computer and we don't like to do that I, I can learn yoga on YouTube I can do all of my gym stuff on YouTube yet I choose to pay a lot of money to the studio even yoga teachers go to the studios to learn okay so I'm gonna say right now off the bat I'm not your target. on the learning side 
maybe on the teaching side. I'll tell you why, because I can show you my home screen of my iPhone. It's probably 50% apps to consume content. Like I live in Flipboard, right? And I customize my Flipboard. I'm an advisor, by the way, I love that company. It's a cool story for another time, but I customize my Flipboard based on the things that I know I want to learn. Now it could be something stupid like TechCrunch, but it's also feeds about things that interest me like cars, right. but it's also things that are beyond my comprehension that I know I want to learn. But you also, you're also a creator of content though. Right, so, right. so it's a different, um, in general, it's a different mindset. I think a lot of people who, you know, you create and consume content in a lot of different ways, by the way. You don't just write or just right. do vlogs, so. Okay, so let's just take one step back. So you guys were in um, Up West Labs. Yes. Shuli and Gil, I mean, what can you say about Shuli and Gil? Shuli and Gil are like, they're just phenomenal people. That's all. Sure. I, the, the, any other word is super, okay, fine. Amen. So we'll leave that. They're just amazing people. So you guys started there. Since then, you've raised almost yeah three million dollars. Three million dollars from some pretty big names. I don't know if you want to talk about that now, but some pretty big names. We'll leave that aside for one second. You guys are in quote unquote stealth. You're not officially launched, right? So we actually just launched two days ago. That was that event. That was the launch. That was the yeah. Launch. And since then, yeah, since then when we've been live. The the website was protected with a passcode till then. Okay, so now let's actually take it from here to here. But I will say one sentence, and I think. Over the last half an hour, we've been talking about this and trying to figure out how to. Because at the end of the day, you know, like you said, Nitsan, when something's new, people are like, they don't. You can't comprehend something new because we're used to the way we did things. We've always done things, so it's very hard to understand changing education, changing learning. I think we we uh, coined a, a not coined, but like honed in on something that we agree on. Which is you're bringing experiences to learning, meaning learning has always been a static, boring experience. You're taking something we're used to from other aspects of our life, which is experiential, experiencing things, not just doing things and you bring it to learning and I can't help but compare it to the Apple store of retail. Retail was always a certain way. You went there because it was a utility, but it was an experience. Comes along Steve Jobs and this is an amazing chapter in the book, Chuck Jobs explained to his board that we, make, we need to make shopping for Apple products an experience. So that's just, I guess, maybe in my limited brain power of understanding how you're changing. You're, that's what you're doing. You're, I'm comparing to the Apple store. You're bringing experiences to learning. Is that fair? Yeah, for sure. Okay, and how does it all work? To, to, to classrooms, maybe even more specific, because oh. learning it. Learning is very and pe abstract. People can imagine a lot of things, like um, escape rooms bringing experiences to okay. learning in ways. Right, interesting. Um, I've never done an escape room. Oh, they're very fun. You should take your whole crew. I'm not sure. You know, I not the I, scary ones. Though. No, I know, but this is a topic for another time. But can I just tell you something? I'm, I, I think there's a part of my brain that uh, that is undeveloped. And let me tell you how I how that manifests. I'm not even joking, by the way. If you put me in front of a puzzle, a five-year-old could solve a puzzle. I wouldn't even know where to start. Because you're like, um... I don't even know where to start. I, I, by the way, I'm not talking, I literally do not understand how anybody could figure out, what do you do, what's the first thing you do? I can't, but it's beyond me. So I think escape rooms are, I just don't, I don't know. I've never done That's it. That's why you take a credit with you. Yeah, maybe she'd be better at it. But anyway, okay. So how does it all work? What, what happens here? You have a mobile app. What happens? Let's say I'm a, I'm, I'm, I want to learn. I want to learn on Jolt. What do I do? Talk. So that's actually a great place to start. Just the decision of I want to learn. Um, and then many times people are like, okay, I want to learn. Now what? Do I spend tons of money on a course? Do I like sign up for a really long whatever? Do I buy a course online? So if you decide that and you go to Jolt, you buy a membership for learning. It's a gym style membership for unlimited classes that take place physically. That's awesome, by the way. That itself is awesome, but you also said a statistic that I, th I found super fascinating, which is what percent of people complete? Less than 2% finish complete online courses that they started. Crazy, that is so, 2%, okay. Yeah. They still make a lot of money, those companies, because right. a lot of people buy the courses, because it's like buying gym shoes when you want to start running. You know what I, I, I heard one time, I, heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but gym gyms depend on the fact that you will not like you'll do a membership and you won't come back true and that yeah I agree um, and that's where we don't compare to gyms and that's why our memberships are month by month um, it's a subscription anyway you download the Jolt app on the Jolt app you sign in and you basically in there have um, all the the Jolt talks that are taking place in the in the Jolt room that is near your house in the next two three weeks and you can grab a seat. There's 14 seats around a Jolt table. Physical seat, like actual physical, physical seats. Yeah. You just choose. You see it on the on the, on the iPhone screen. Mm -hmm. um, 14 seats. You choose what seat you want to be in. You can see who else is going to be in that room. And then you physically attend the session. Same Monday at 7 p.m. You go for a copywriting um, or effective writing uh, Jolt talk, led by um, an expert. It could be from Silicon Valley, from New York, from wherever. Tel we have Jolters from Tel Aviv, we have Jolters from Nigeria. Really? Yeah. Wow. How'd they hear about it? 
um, with our beautiful marketing campaigns for Jolters that we scouted these incredible people. So, so that's one big difference between education and Jolt. I mean, traditional education is that the, the Jolters, the, the teachers, quote unquote, um, aren't just some professor, like, you know, they're actually people who are experts in their field, like true experts, not that professors aren't experts, but like people from the industry that have done it and know their stuff. Yeah, they practice what they preach and they're not professional speakers, but rather professionals who speak. Okay, so we're at 10 minutes and 40 seconds, so I just want to sum this up. So I go, I go to the app, I literally sign up as a membership, you know, is there a set price or is it different levels? There's a set price, it's, a, it's 350 shekels a month. So 100, 100 bucks. For unlimited, 100 bucks for unlimited learning on a monthly basis. Okay, and then basically I'll see quote unquote a curriculum, or not a curriculum, yeah, but a timetable. A timetable, and I'll say, okay, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, and then I physically go to a place in Israel and Tel Aviv, Rothschild, and other places around the world, I'm assuming you're gonna be having many places like that around the world. And I go into a room and there's literally a room that you designed, designed from the bottom up, from the, like, from the tables to the chair, everything you designed it, you owned, again, reminding me of the way Steve Jobs designed that first Apple store. And it's optimized for the experience of learning. Got it? Yes. I think I got it. You got it really well. Okay, so I'm going to be giving a jolt. I'm going to be a jolter. I'm going to be speaking and teaching in December, I think. But I actually think I want to download the app and experience the learning because there's some things, as a marketing guy, I don't like saying this, but it's the reality. There are some things that you just have to experience in order to understand them. And I always tell entrepreneurs, you know, the first thing when I sit with an entrepreneur for lunch and they take out their laptop, they're like, I want to show you. I'm like, no, I don't want to see it. I want to understand it first conceptually because if it's the most beautiful product in the world, I'll be blinded by that. And if it's the ugliest product in the world, I'll also be blinded. So explain to me conceptually, the first thing any entrepreneur wants to do is let you experience it. As a marketing guy, I'm not a fan. Having said that, as a human being, I understand there's some things you just have to experience. You can, I've explained that, you've explained that bringing experiences to learning, I get it, but what that really means tangibly or practically speaking, I feel like I have to experience it, so I'm going to experience it. Super cool, how do people learn more about this? What's your website? Jolt us, jolt.us. Jolt.us, how big is the team? How? We're 19 people. Wow. That's crazy, you guys yeah, grew. Yeah, three in the US. So you're gonna be making a splash, I'm assuming in terms of the long jump couple of weeks, people hear, hearing a lot about you? Yes. Okay. You can expect it in various... Um, and is the, is the website the, a platform or is it just a website, like if a marketing website, can I actually sign up for Jolt? And you sign up on the website and then you get an email inviting you to don't download the app. iOS Android? Yes. I, iOS Android. You guys are all ready. We're ready. Well, good luck with that and uh, Thank yeah. Thank you, I mean, listen, It sounds... Like, so crazy to me that you're changing something that hasn't been changed forever, that it's so hard for me to grasp. And that's why I need to uh, you know, experience it. But Rock, <laughs> I, I have absolutely 0% doubt that this thing is going to be a success, both because of you and because of your co founder, who's somewhat of a rock star. Yeah. I mean, I don't both know him. Them, but, they're incredible. Oh, I didn't realize. Who was, there, who was the third one? Nadav, our CTO, who just like built a video platform in two months. You built your own technology? Yeah, wow. eye level. Is, yeah. Oh, eye level is the problem. Okay. So, it sounds amazing. I'm gonna say, try it. First of all, I'm gonna try it. Second of all, I'm gonna say on camera something that you know already, I don't have to say. Anything I can do to help. Anything I can do to help from the launch to spreading to promoting to, I don't know. You tell me, we'll talk about it off, off the camera, but I like it. Connecting you, connecting me to your dad. I'm gonna connect you to <laughs> dad. I'm enjoying it. Awesome. Thank you very yeah. much. Good luck, own it. finished a meal that can just, I mean, there's only one word to characterize what we just ate. Yeah. Like, they basically took an entire cow and <laughs> put it on our plate. Something like that, yeah. Right? How I think steak? a cow for you and a cow for me. How was the steak? Cow-ish. <laughs> First of all, by the way, it wasn't just a cow. Like I usually, I just have a steak, but in Shoshi, like we, we haven't we haven't had like our you know a real formal lunch meeting ever basically. So we were like, let's do this. So we actually didn't only get a cow, but we got a cow with goose liver on top. It was off. It was like they're like drooling right yeah, now. It should be by the way. <laughs> I didn't take a video of my food. I like total fail. But anyway, fail. okay. So I don't even know where to start. From the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Your education, because here's what I need you to extract from this interview. I'm sitting with one of the more remarkable people I think I've ever met. Period. Full stop. Tell me about your education. Uh, well, I have um, double BA, double, triple MA, and a teaching diploma. 
All from University of. What are your degrees in? Uh, English and Japanese. Wait, another that's, is that one? That's two degrees: English and Japanese. Well, BA in English and Asian Studies, okay. Japanese, Japan and Japanese. MA in English and Japan and Japanese. Ex International Executive MBA and a teaching diploma. So six overall. That were completed in seven years. Did you ever get your uh, IQ checked? Ah uh, yes. Did you really? Yeah. Should I ask? I don't want to ask. That's that's too. Uh, it's, it's TMI. I don't no, want to. It's okay. I don't have anything I mean, to hide. So, with. Listen, th there's something like very strange about your brain. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay. As long My as we mother had me tested, like Sheldon says. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> and your background, not your background, but your your dad was an important person. Ah uh, yes, back in in the USSR. He was. What'd you say he was? He was like the equivalent of the uh, minister of economy. Minister of economy of the USSR. Okay. So, I mean, you have brains in the family. I get that. Now. Actually, my mom is way smarter. She has four PhDs. Right, I forgot about your mom, of course. <laughs> okay, four PhDs, totally normal. Okay. Very hard to compete with that. So, I feel like we've known each other. How long have we known each other? Four years. Four or five years, okay. Yeah. So, you know, we always see each other at conferences, we schmooze, we talk, we're friends. Well, someone's smoking weed. You smell that? Yeah. Someone's so me. openly smoking weed right now. Yeah. Like in this is this restaurant. Is this legal in Israel no, already? No, not like this. It's oh, like okay. strong smell of weed. Yeah. Okay, wow. All right, so I, I, I'm just trying to figure out where to start here. Okay, so you were a scout for investments in Israel from Japan. And from Russia. Russia. So you brought investors from Russia and Japan to Israel. You closed many, many multi, multi million dollar deals. You know, I was sitting the other day, I interviewed someone, this guy Michael, here actually, and he called it significant liquidity events. I love that. <laughs> so you had some significant liquidity events. Yeah. Exits. Yeah. So you made you made a bundle. I don't know if you're a billionaire, but you made some money, you're good. And then you well, you did a lot of other things in between, but then you looked at a problem that I'm fairly convinced not more than five people on planet Earth are even looking at. Gas and energy. Leaks. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, you gotta listen. Like, I told you to dumb it down. Like, dumb it down even more. Like, talk to me like I'm your grandmother. <laughs> tell me about what you're doing. And she would actually get it because she. Of course she would. Because let me guess, she's 85 PhDs. All right, no, tell me. She founded the uh, electricity company in Russia and ran it for 50 years. Of course she did. Um, <laughs> Okay. Well, basically, uh, I was a technology scout as well as an investor, and um, one day a paper, a theory, came across my email, which just showed some graphs, potential, you know, prevention of critical failures. So wait, let me stop you right there. Yeah. All industries, literally all industries, have failures. Anything fails, right? Every technology, everything yeah. fails. Now, the question isn't whether or not it's going to fail. Everything fails. The mm -hmm. question is, A, can you prevent it? Mm -hmm. And if you can't prevent it, when can you detect it? Exactly. And that's what we, were, we are doing. We basically managed to get to a level where we can prevent, we detect the very the smallest defect that would lead to a critical failure, catch it very early when it just starts, and then prevent the entire critical failure from happening you're by addressing this, the small problem. And you're taking this to gas and energy, but realistically, you can apply this technology anything. to anything. Yeah, we tried it on helicopters, wind energy, pumps, compressors, oil, gas, water, any pipeline, anything with a sensor because what we do is basically big data analytics. We take the existing information, the big data that's already um, collected by the clients and we make sense out of it. Let me ask you a question. Cannot. Is there any buzzword that you are not doing right now? Because you are doing no, AI, see, yeah. computer vision, Yes. What else? Machine learning. Machine learning. Anomaly detection. All right, so you're all the Pre buzzwords. Preventive maintenance, predictive okay. maintenance. So let's you stop know. by helicopters for one second, because that maybe a little bit more resonates with normal people. You can tell a pilot, this is what you told me before, right? Yeah. Six minutes for failure of the aircraft, mm -hmm. that they should eject themselves. Six minutes. Yes, if, it, if this failure cannot be uh, fixed from afar and the plane will crash, that the algorithm, which is machine learning, no human intervention is required, will present an alert for the pilot to abort. So wow. that the pilot is saved while they're Aircraft. Okay, so you, you built this like, I mean, insane technology, let's just say it as it is. You, you, would you raise like $200 million of capital? Uh, no, actually I'm the sole investor and the sole owner. So far I haven't raised anything. So we've been fully bootstrapped. So you own 100% of this company? Yes, sir. And no one else is doing this nearly as accurately as you. And you have governments knocking on your door. Um, yes, that's exactly what's happening. And within a couple of years, you will be generating... A billion. A billion? A billion. Within. And now you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue. Yes. Now. Yes. We're gonna generate a billion probably in three years. Have you ever seen me speechless before? You haven't, have you? What, what the, like, what the actual hell? 
how come, first of all, how did I not know about it? You know, the truth is, in her defense, she did reach out to me a year ago and ask me if I want to hear about it. And I'm like, energy and gas, not my thing. Stupid me. But okay, like honestly, I mean, this is, I mean, for, you know what? Forget the business aspect of things. What this will do for the environment. Oh yeah, that's the main goal. Gas leaks. I mean, we don't need to. oil leaks, gas oil leaks, leaks, explosions, leaks. You know, underwater explosions, above ground explosions. It's all just gonna make the world better if we prevent this kind of mess early. And, and enough, the technology is working. It's actually, it's not like you know. Oh, yeah, it's been proven. It's patented. We're starting, you know, PCT. Like a world seventy-five patent. percent accuracy, or what kind of accuracy? Uh, so far, what accuracy is like a, a very difficult term, but so far we've been accurate a hundred percent, meaning that for every time the algorithm presented an alert, there either was a leak or a leak on its way. No false alarms. No false alarms so far, thankfully. Might be in the future, but so far we. This is almost too good to be true. I know it sounds like science fiction. A little bit. Everybody tells me it's science fiction. Then we run a small pilot, and they're just fall off their chairs eventually. So this really is n not a joke when I, this is not like just me saying this, this is actually going to be a billion dollar Israeli company soon. Uh, yes sir, we have the office established in the US, we will be opening four other offices internationally within six months. How many customers do you have paying customers today around, I, I don't need to know numbers, but like I don't yeah. need to know how much they're paying you. Uh, we have several small scale, overall 26 paying customers. And some and of them are literally like trillion dollar companies. Well, currently we're negotiating tens of millions of dollars and contracts with the largest oil and gas companies in the world. You have cities asking you to provide the software infrastructure to the wiring of the city. I mean, you told me I mean, we can't talk about that. Yeah, in detail, electricity. But... Yeah, the entire electricity of a, of a nation, actually, of a country, so that we can prevent leakages. Because if wires are inside pipelines underground, it's like they're in a closed environment, and if there's a leak, then the entire city can explode. Actually, so there's, preventing this. there's quite literally no limit to what you can do with this technology. Exactly, from medical to wind energy to pipelines. All we need is a sensor or a couple of sensors. All I'm asking is one thing. I have yeah. only one ask from you. Yeah. When you do IPO this company for billions, yeah. promise me that you'll still buy me steak. Oh, sure. I told you I'll buy you the place. And shake on it right and now. And shake on it. We have Remember, so many witnesses. It's, yeah. It's on, it's on record. <laughs> it's on camera. This is amazing. And you know, when people talk about the caliber of Israeli innovation, this is what we're talking about. Really. I mean, I love Waze, love Wix, love all those companies. Don't get me wrong. I'm not in any way belittling, but like, this is world changing. I mean, th no, this, I love Avishai, I love Waze, I love all those guys. But this is like, again, a, a phrase that I think people use to, this is making the world a better place. Genuinely, fundamentally making the world a better place. That's the vision. It's not all about Un money, it's about saving the environment. Believable. Well, all I have to say is good luck with that. Thank and don't you. forget the little people. <laughs> You're not that little. Oh, is that a fat joke? Make fun of me, I'm on a diet. I'm just kidding. We just ate a cow. That's true. Talk about a remarkable day meeting some outrageous entrepreneurs. Tomorrow, no vlog episode. The next episode, episode 100, Mind Blown, is Saturday night with me on my way to Silicon Valley for the week. Have a great weekend. See you then.